Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of UA Eats. I'm UA, and I am back in Times Square, Manhattan, arguably the tourist capital of the whole world. The last time we came here was to eat at Gordon Ramsay Fish and Chips, which opened at the end of last year. And you know, big name, touristy location, we thought it was gonna suck, but it actually turned out to be pretty good. This time though, we're gonna be eating another kind of fast food fried food, but a bit of a bigger chain. We're gonna be eating at the famous Raising Cane's, a fast food chain from Louisiana. Now, I've wanted to try Raising Cane's for a very long time, and everyone says that Raising Cane's is the best fast food chain on the planet, or at least in the US. People say it's even better than Popeyes and Chick-fil-A, which are my two favorite fast food chains for chicken. The chain has been expanding pretty rapidly, and most recently, a few months ago, they opened their flagship location here in Times Square, and not just like a regional flagship location, it's apparently their global flagship location. Don't just take my word for it, that's what it says on the sign. Now, not only does Raising Cane's claim to make the best chicken, but they're so confident in that claim that they only have like a few things on their menu. They only sell chicken tenders, I think a chicken sandwich, and that's pretty much it. That means that they're really specialized and they're really confident that you're gonna like what they serve, so come on, let's go check it out. And let me tell you, some people overheard me filming my intro and they told me that Cane's is hands down better than Popeye's. That's what they claim, so I'm getting kind of excited. Okay guys, we just got our food and we just found a table here at Raising Cane's and we're really lucky because this place is pretty packed. I mean, it's seven o'clock, it's like peak dinner time, especially here in New York in Times Square. Lots of tourists, not really any locals. So lots of tourists and I was afraid I wasn't gonna be able to find a spot. And I actually got all my food to go because I was afraid that I was gonna have to eat outside in Times Square, which wouldn't have been the worst thing. I mean, it's Times Square, it's pretty well lit. It's almost as bright as daytime. But luckily we found the spot indoors. So let's see what we got from Raising Cane's. Okay, so I don't usually like these plastic really tight containers because I feel like they tend to like really insulate the food and steam them. But luckily they kind of have some built-in vents here. So I guess they thought of everything at this fried chicken joint. All right, let's open this real quick. There you go. I see, the key is to go from the bottom, not the top. Oops. Looks like we uh, dropped our Texas toast. So we're gonna have to get another one later. But um, even though it landed on the table, we can show it to you guys. So this is the uh, Texas toast. Uh, in either case, it doesn't really look like we're missing too much. It kind of just looks like just a piece of thick cut toast. Okay, I guess it kind of has like a bit of a garlic bread smell, but it kind of smells vaguely like a very weak garlic bread, but it kind of looks like French toast. So uh, not the most appetizing side here, but we'll get another one later. It was only like 150, so gonna discard this though, cause it landed on the table. And yeah, they don't have a lot on the menu. They pretty much only have tenders and different variations of tenders. Like they have like a three piece box or like a two piece box or something like that. What we thought was most economical, which we might have been mistaken about, was because they don't sell the sandwich on its own. So we decided to get this chicken tender combo and then add this tender on the side, uh, which came out to be a little bit cheaper. Though it kind of looks like the chicken sandwich is also not really a chicken sandwich. It looks like it's more or less just the tenders stuffed in some bread, which might not be a bad thing, but man, they're really, really confident about their tenders here. But yeah, let's just open this guy up and... Yep. <laughs> As I suspected, it's literally just a few tenders on some bread and some very mid, AKA average looking lettuce. So I'll be honest, not the most appetizing chicken sandwich I've had. I gotta say though, the tenders look pretty good. We ate at a pretty good fast food restaurant in the last video at Jollibee and the chicken there overall pretty good, but this just almost looks like next level. I mean, it just looks so golden and so crunchy and I don't know, it just kind of looks like it's gonna be soft even though I haven't 
eaten it. It just looks soft on the inside from the outside. I don't know if you know what I mean. Like, look, it just looks soft, right? Okay, I don't really smell any special seasoning on it. It kind of just smells like normal chicken tenders. Nothing too special, maybe just salt at most, but nothing to this tender, but to try it. You know, what I love about these chicken tenders is that they're not too dry on the inside. Too often, white meat chicken is often overcooked because people are afraid, especially fast food restaurants, that if you undercook chicken, you're gonna get people sick. So it's good that they err on the side of caution, but you often lose some juiciness as a result. But this chicken, it's not dry. It's a little bit moist on the inside, which is great, especially for white meat. That being said though, it may not be dry, but I wouldn't say it's juicy or moist on the inside. So I would say these are some of the better chicken tenders I've had, but not the best. If I can be completely honest, I still prefer Chick-fil-A to this. I mean, these chicken tenders are definitely crunchier and that crunchiness helps to carry them and, you know, really complement the chicken on the inside. But that being said, even though the Chick-fil-A chicken tenders are less crunchy, I feel that the batter has better flavor and it's better seasoned and it doesn't just taste like an average fried chicken batter. Now this is an average fried chicken batter that's elevated but that being said I still feel like there's not really anything special about it. Okay let's see though if this cane sauce really helps to lift it and make up for any deficiencies. Now that cane sauce is really flavorful. Hmm. Okay, so the sauce really helps. The sauce helps to offset the aspects of the tender that I don't like as much. Namely that the chicken, while not dry on the inside, could be a little bit more moist, so the sauce helps to kind of hydrate it a little bit more. And to be honest, this fried chicken is a bit oily, a bit greasy, and the sauce really helps to cut through that. But that being said though, I gotta say that the sauce is very strong. Like, it really, really has a kick to it. Like, it's a really, really strong sauce. I think it could be a little bit more subtle. Like, the sauce is so strong that it kind of masks a lot of the chicken innate flavor, and all you really taste is the sauce. I mean, I can't even really put my finger on what's in this sauce. I think the flavor I was trying to put my finger on is Worcestershire. How do you say that? Worcestershire sauce? Worcestershire sauce, I think is how you say it. I think. But regardless, it's a good sauce, but it just really has like this like molasses-y, like sweet, but like kind of like bottled sweet kind of flavor. Not sweet in like a fresh or refreshing way. So it's a good sauce, but I kind of want it in smaller doses. I feel like it would be a good sauce for like chicken nuggets where they really force you to take smaller doses, but I don't know, to be honest, I feel like it's a little bit too strong for me, but this place is wildly popular, so maybe it's just me. Also, the tenders were quite small, to be honest. They were about one and a half times the size of this sauce container. So about that big. So yeah, they were not particularly large either, but we're done with the tenders. Let's see how the tenders taste in sandwich form, I guess. Not the best quality bread I've seen, but not the worst either. Actually, I recommend getting it in sandwich form. Mostly because, well, in sandwich form, I feel like that starch really helps to offset the oiliness of the breading. The starch kind of helps to really absorb that greasiness and also give your mouth kind of a break from the oiliness and the greasiness. And on top of that, in sandwich form, they kind of apply the sauce a little bit more conservatively for you. They give you like a nice little thin layer of it. So you kind of get a smaller portion and it's not overwhelming in its strong taste, as opposed to when you dip it yourself, you know, you're gonna get like a big glob at a time. So in this case, the sauce distribution is also better. But that being said, I mean, as you can tell by this tender always falling out, they really should just invent like a chicken sandwich, you know, breaded chicken. Like the fact that these are in tender form, it's really quite clumsy. 
and it kind of feels like they were just lazy and they only had tenders on their menu but they wanted a chicken sandwich so they just bought some bread and you know some prepackaged lettuce and they just threw this together so I like the idea I don't necessarily like the execution it seems a little lazy if I can be honest and this bread is not the best quality bread this bread is eh, it's a little meh it's barely better than grocery quality bread if even but I guess let's try some of the fries Oh, mmm. Well, let me tell you, I thought these were just gonna be like the most average fries. I mean, they look like it, right? They look like they're just your average grocery store frozen fries that you can get from like Costco. But the oil that they fry it in, oh, it's got some nuttiness. It tastes so good. I don't think it's even just peanut oil. I feel like it might even be the oil that they fried the chicken in. I'm not sure, but. Mmm. Do not underestimate the fries. They're really, really good. And lastly, you know, Raising Cane doesn't really have a lot of items on their menu. So really slim pickings for this review. One thing that they do have that's from the South though is sweet tea. So I really, really want to try their sweet tea. Now I'm not usually a big fan of sweet tea. I tend to find it too overwhelmingly sweet, but hey, when in Rome, and in this case, when in Raising Cane's, and this is really popular in the South. So maybe it will turn me into a believer. Yeah, no, actually, that's not bad. Maybe I've just never had good sweet tea before. Maybe I've only had it at some less good southern restaurants on the East Coast. But this is pretty good. I mean, it's sweet. It's definitely decadent. It's definitely not good if you're trying to lose weight or count calories. But if you have a sweet tooth, it's kind of like pushing the boundaries of too much of a good thing. And it's really good. Like, it's not too sweet. It's like almost too much and it just barely doesn't make it. So it makes it kind of pleasant. Oh, not bad. Not my favorite drink, but definitely not bad. But all right, let's replace our fallen Texas toast and then we can conclude the review. So come on, let's go. Okay guys, so we wound up taking our last order outside. You know, we're here in Times Square, just outside. Our seat was no longer available. The place got really crowded and there was a little bit of room in the main room, but there was a DJ in there and it was way too loud. So we decided just to eat out here under the bright lights of Times Square. Last item from Raising Cane's, Texas Toast. Let's eat this right across the street from Mickey Mouse, Minnie Mouse, the Mario Brothers, and Elmo. It's actually not bad. It tastes nice and homemade in a good way. Like it kind of tastes like if you're just making a grilled cheese at home, you get some nice thick bread and then you slather some butter on it and you grill it nice and slow to get some grilled butter on it. I feel like this is kind of how it would taste and I really do not mean that as a bad thing. Like it tastes really homemade and really homey and I actually enjoy this. And it's nice and thick cut and fluffy as well. Hmm, not bad. But I gotta say guys, I felt like Raising Cane's was, it was good, it wasn't really great. I mean, I felt like if I went in with no expectations, I would feel like it's a pretty not bad, pretty solid fast food chain. But the way it's been so hyped up, I don't know, like it's good. I don't know if it's like hands down the best fast food chain or hands down the best fried chicken chain or even hands down the best Southern chain or even hands down the best chain from Louisiana. I would say the main thing that I really preferred at Raising Cane's over Popeye's, like significantly preferred was the sweet tea. I feel like the Popeye sweet tea is way too sweet for me. I feel like this is a little bit more balanced. It might even be made with cane sugar, perhaps, I don't know. So yeah, overall, I will say Raisin Cane's, not bad, not great. I would say it's a little overrated and a little bit overhyped, but that's just my opinion. Of course, this is just the Manhattan Times Square location. When I was walking there and other people heard me talking about it, some tourists told me that they hands down liked it more than Popeyes. So maybe this is just a bad location. If you've been to Raisin Cane's before, let me know what you think of Raisin Cane's. Let me know in the comments because great minds eat alike. But yeah, it is getting really crowded so I am gonna get out of Times Square and head home so if you like my videos make sure you like and subscribe that way you stay up to date whenever I post another video until next time I'll see you later